the biggest challenge for me has been just interpersonal. All of us are champions of this game. And so we all have our own ideas of what we think is best for the game, but ultimately trying to align it to a vision, it's an ongoing process. And I've heard you and I accept your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you are watching Once to Watch. Yeah, hey, I'm John. I'm producer, designer, and animator for Ludophoria. I'm Emma. I'm the lead artist, uh, writer, and researcher for Ludophoria. And I'm Byron. I'm programmer, writer, director, and coffee addict for Ludophoria. So we came up through the undergrad together. I joined with John sort of in our second point five year uh, at uni. Yeah, we worked in a third year team together. And I was like, off to the side, but I'd worked with John in first year. Um, and then after third year was done, I was pulled in <laughs> to the yeah, whirlpool. Yeah, we, it's about a girl who's been unjustly sent to hell and her demonic oversized arm, which is trying to help her escape. Help being in quotation yeah. marks. Yeah. Because so there that, is an underlying story there as well, which I yeah. don't know how much we want to get into. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In terms of the experience of the game, imagine the old Super Mario games, such as, you know, th those that were inspired from the kind of old Nintendo era, except you've slapped another player onto that character. So both players are controlling one character, but you've both got a completely different set of abilities. And so it's about trying to navigate through loads of challenges and defeating different enemies and solving puzzles, all whilst trying to get to the seed of hell to escape it. institution, the Games Academy, kind of putting on a pedestal in, in a good way, what has been, you know, quite downtrodden personality or type of person, like the gamer, you know, the, the kind of people that enjoy games. It feels weirdly separate to the uni because it has its own warehouse. But the beauty of that is all of the Games Academy students get to join together and feel like they're part of this big community and it, you know, it kind of enables you to just get really stuck into the creative medium of video games and just try and be experimental and learn from everyone around you. Yeah, so I think it like building up that culture of fail faster is really nice. Yeah. Um, I was super scared of failure before I came into university and then I came into university and like I'm really proud of all of my mistakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the staff at the Games Academy and the way the course is designed allows the lecturers to tailor everything you're doing towards what your aspirations are. So like for us, we were just given support from fairly early on that oh, you guys are going to, you know, you want to go into the indie space and start your own company. Let's just support you doing that in whatever way we can. So we've been, you know, signposted on to incredible kind of people and resources that have helped us to get to where we are. Sometimes people that have just come out of the Games Academy as well. Yeah, yeah the launch pad was completely integral to our current position really because we finished our undergrad and continued to work through the masters as a group of individuals that knew how to make games. Being partnered up with the Launchpad was incredibly vital for us because they showed us exactly how to develop a product, essentially, and how you pitch that and how you make that interesting and viable. But yeah, the Launchpad allows us to take our ability to just make a game, to go, right, now you can tailor that and you can actually try and sell this thing. 